Welcome to the program Good News of Islam, an informative and educative program brought to you by Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, Jamaica. Auzu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear viewers, we have once again come your way with the good news of Islam coming from the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. That is the Jamaican chapter. Now today, the subject that we want to deal with is some of the prophecies as mentioned in the Holy Quran. Most of these prophecies are in the form of the scientific discoveries of our time. Now, any time God sent his messengers, he gave them prophecies. Some of these prophecies are fulfilled during the time of the prophets so that they are witnessed by the prophet and his followers. This goes a long way to strengthen their faith. Some of the prophecies also are fulfilled after the prophets are dead and gone. Now, in the case of the Holy Quran, there are so many prophets, uh, prophecies, numerous prophecies, that is still being fulfilled in our time. Now, if God were to tell us only about the reward that one would get in the hereafter, and we do not see anything being fulfilled in this life, we shall be in a state of doubt. But then, when we study the Holy Quran, we realize that there are a lot of prophecies that have also been fulfilled in our time that encourages us that whatever God has said or has prophesied or has uh, promised us in the hereafter is also going to happen. Now, the first prophecy that I would take up is, is regarding the means of transport. Now, you realize that before vehicles were invented, people used to travel on horses, camels, and uh, Asks. And now with this, the Holy Quran mentioned this from the Holy Quran chapter uh, 16, which I would want to read. The Holy Quran, it says that, it says that, and he, that is Allah, has created horses and mules and asses that you may ride them, and as a source of beauty and he will create what you do not yet know. He will create what you do not yet know. It means that there was a prophecy given to the prophet about 1,500 years ago that a time would come when the horses and the camels that they were using were going to be replaced with another means of transport. And this was also mentioned in another part of the Holy Quran, which says that uh, um, a time would come when the camel, 10 months pregnant, would be abandoned. In other words, it would be replaced by another means of transport. It says, Auzubillah ibn it says, What is that Ishar Utlat? And when the she camels, 10 months pregnant, shall be abandoned. Now, what do we see? Now today we have so many means of transport, or so means of transportation. The airplane is there, and even with the airplane we have so many types of airplane. Then we have buses, we have different types of cars, some using you know, uh, petrol, some using diesel. And different forms of uh, uh, means of transport have now been uh, you know, uh, manufactured. So these things, or this good news was given to the prophet, peace be upon him, so many years ago. But where he did not live up to see these things, but we are witnessing this with our eyes. Now the question is, if we are doubtful about the message of the Holy Quran, then we must equally be doubtful about the, uh, uh, um, the manufacture of these vehicles, because we are using them, we see them. We travel with them, we benefit from them, and then we also enjoy them. So it is the same prophet 
who gave us the, the glad tidings, the good news that the camels and the horses were going to be replaced with better means of transport. It's the same prophet who is telling us that God is one and who is telling us that if we worship God, we are going to be you know, rewarded with paradise after this life. So how could the prophet be a liar when he had mentioned things pertaining to this world and those words are fulfilled? And then when it comes to spiritual matters, then we close our eyes. There is no spiritual book or there is no book of a religion that tells us that this means of transport was going to come, apart from the Holy Quran. And such is the beautiful teachings of the Holy Quran. Then again, when we come to the modern um, communication system, the modern communication system in the form of the phones, the mobile phones and other type of phones, now nobody knew that a time would come when you could stand in your or you could be at the comfort of your own home and then speak to somebody who is far away. Now the Holy Quran says that Awzubillahi Ibn Shaitan Rajim he says, what is our nufusu zuwija? And when various people are brought together, how do we you know, come together? Because now we see events on the television sometimes, for example, the recent Olympic Games, at the comfort of your own home, you sit down there and you watch the events as if you are just present at the place. So this is also mentioned in the Holy Quran chapter 81 verse 8, where this prophecy was given to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, that a time would come when you could just be in your home and talk to your brother or sister or friend who is far away from you. And we are witnessing these things. Now, in the same chapter, that is uh, chapter 21, when Allah says that, why is that my order to so elat? A time was when, when somebody gave birth to a daughter or a baby girl, he could decide to you know, bury the child alive. But the prophecy was there that a time would come when nobody could do that without being questioned or being, or being put before the law. Now, there are so many women rights or uh, what do you call uh, feminine uh, rights here and there. But the Holy Quran had mentioned this thing long ago that a time would come when nobody could trample on the rights of on the, uh, the, the, the rights of women, that women will be liberated and they will have their freedom. And this was a prophecy which the Holy Quran mentioned about 1,500 years ago. Then again. We all know that during the time of the prophets, the major prophets, that like Moses, Abraham, people used to write on the skins of animals. And during the time of Islam also, there were no paper, uh, no, no books. But then the prophecy was given in the same chapter, Holy Quran chapter 81 verse 11. It says that, where is a suhufu no shira? That when books are spread abroad, that a time would come when books would be readily available anywhere you go. And then now even you sit at, on the internet and any information that you want, you'll be able to get it. So now you see books everywhere. So these are the beautiful teachings and prophecies uh, which are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Another thing of interest is the recent um, you know, scientific uh, 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 news coming from the, the scientists that they believe in an extra terrestrial life, that they believe that the possibility of other species of life, you know, living outside this earth is there. Now this thing, the Holy Quran had mentioned it long ago and it is mentioned yeah, it says, that is in the Holy Quran chapter 42 verse 30, it says and among his saints is the creation of the heavens and the earth. And whatever living creatures he has spread forth in both. And he has the power to gather them together whenever he pleases. So Allah has given us a hint that there are different species of you know, creation or creatures or living beings who are not part of you know, the population on this earth. And he says that as and when he, he lies he would, you know, bring the two uh, uh, crazy together. Again, 
He says that um, air traffic, that is people will be able to, you know, come out with certain means of transport which will be able to, you know, go into the skies and then explore what is there. He says, I was belied in Nashi he says, was Samai, was Samai Zatel Hubuk. That is when those, um, the, 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 the orbits or the paths in the skies will be open. So while prophesying, prophesying about these modern systems, people could not understand actually what the prophet was saying or what the Holy Quran was saying. But now we, we have seen with our own eyes that you know, we have different types of airships going up there and then we, we, they come out with information to us. Another interesting uh, thing that the Holy Quran mentioned, it says, Wa iza ishal utilat, that when all types of animals we brought together. Now before we knew animals were living in the forest or living in the bush, like the lion, the, like the elephant, like the, uh, uh, the tiger and the others, like snakes. And the Holy Quran made this prophecy that a time would come when these animals could be brought together by human beings. And now what do we see? We see the zoo, where we see all these you know, wild animals being brought together and people go there and see them and watch them. But we've forgotten that Allah had given us a hint in the Holy Quran that this thing was going to happen. So if you decide to reject or to refuse to make use of this book, one must understand that you are doing a lot of harm to yourself because this information could not have come from a prophet who had no uh, uh, formal education. He did not receive any education from anybody. So what, how could the prophet could have come, with, uh, come up with this uh, information? Because these things, all these things fulfilled after he was dead and gone. So he had no idea about these things, but it was, they were revealed to him by God that these things are going to be fulfilled. And like I said earlier on, that these things, once they are fulfilled, it, it should strengthen our faith that all oh, this book truly comes from the, from the all-knowing God because no human being could have prophesied that these things were going to, you know, happen. So, and then again it says, a time would come when two seas will be brought together. Now we know the construction of the uh, Panama Canal and the Suez Canal. You know, in the past, they were not um, flowing together. There was, you know, passes of land lying between them. But now, the, we have seen the co construction of the Panama Canal and the construction of the Suez Canal. Now ships can easily, you know, explore through, through them and then it's like they have become like one sea now. This was also prophesied in the Holy Quran about 1,500 years ago. So, so these are just few prophecies in the form of scientific prophecies which the Holy Quran prophesied so many years ago. Now we travel easily with different types of transport. And uh, we, nobody could say that it is he who came out uh, with these ideas. Of course, somebody could claim that all these ideas were given by God because they were within God's plan. And God gave the hint in the Holy Quran through the, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet of Islam, or the Holy Prophet of Islam, was actually a blessing for mankind because all the things that we need, both spiritual, moral, and uh, physical, were blessed through him. So it would be very sad when we reject or refuse to accept this prophet and we begin to think that we, we don't need him and we are so clever that we can, you know, uh, live on this planet without going according to the teachings or according to the book that was brought uh, by this prophet. So it is time for, for us to, to, to sit down and study all the beautiful teachings of the Holy Quran because now all the things that the Holy Quran prophesied about, they have all been fulfilled, at least most of them have been fulfilled and we are seeing them, we are enjoying them and then we forget about where the, those prophecies were made. And like I said, all these prophecies 
were made in the Holy Quran and nowhere else about the modern communication system which we are enjoying now. And in fact, the Holy Prophet himself once said that a time would come when you would see somebody with a very long ear. Now with this long ear, he was referring to a time when you will stand at a place and you'll be able to talk to somebody who is very far away from you. Because we all know that the ears are used for listening. So if he talks about somebody having long ear, it does not mean that you will see somebody with physical ears. But what it means is that a time would come when you'll be able to communicate with somebody who is very far away from you. And that is the modern communication system that we have which of course was also prophesied uh, by the Holy Quran. And then, as for the books, I did not mention them because we know that everywhere you go now, you see books, books are readily available. But before, both the Bible and the Quran, they were not, they were just, you know, available to few people because of lack of papers and because of lack of books. But now, wherever, everywhere you go, you see the big printing presses, printing millions of books daily. And this, was prophesied by the Holy Quran that a time would come when books would be readily available. So I think it is very, very important that we try to ponder over, over its contents. And if you are able to do that, we shall be doubly rewarded because it will help us to be able to understand the blessings that God has given us physically or in this world and the blessings that have been reserved for people who worship God. And if we actually say, think that whatever is mentioned in the Quran is for Muslims alone, and that if we are not Muslims, we, don't, we have nothing to do about it, then I think it's, it's time to reason that these things that the Quran also mentioned about the mini, means of trans, new means of transport, and then the new means of communication, we should equally refuse to use them, because apart from the, the, the Holy Quran, no other book made mention of them. It is only the Holy Quran who, who made mention of them. So if the same book is telling us about one, one God, it telling us about paradise, it telling us about hell, it telling us about you know, angels, so we don't have to you know, refuse or to, to reject them. We must equally you know, accept them. So uh, we hope that you continue to listen to this program or you continue to you know, follow this uh, discourse so that uh, we shall all be equal beneficiaries. I'm at the Jamaican chapter, which is located at 25 Sugar Way, Bushy Park, or better still, uh, Gates in Jamaica. And um, if you continue to follow this program, like I said earlier on, God willing, we'll be able to uh, be, um, be abreast with the teachings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for watching.